Okay, um, I enlisted in the Air Force in 1977, September, and went into basic training uh, January of 1978. Uh, from there, I went into uh, security police technical school, and what I found out was um, I was one of the first women in the career field. Not the first, but uh, one of the first groups that they just opened the career field up to women. And I didn't know that at the time. And um, so I, that was soon to be a discovery when I got to my first base, which was uh, RAF Bentwaters. And so I finished tech school in April, and I left, departed for RAF Bentwaters in May 1978. And I got there, and I was stationed at the 81st Security Police Squadron. And my job was pretty much um, entry controller and working um, uh, working in law enforcement. Uh, I was put on B flight, uh, Bravo flight, and pretty much what we would do is um, just pretty much make sure to keep the base secure. Our job was to go to the back gate and just make sure the gate was locked up. So I was on um, uh, patrol at the time, and I was I had a colleague with me, Airman his Airman Duffield. We were both Airman First Class, which is the E3 at the time, and and we had just checked the lock on the gate, and we were just filling out our check sheet and making sure everything, and then we we're just sitting there, and it was about two, three o'clock in the morning, and it was just really it was a it was a clear night, it wasn't rainy out, and we were just kind of you know, bored figuring out we got about four or five more hours left and you know, so we're just sitting there talking. And all of a sudden we see this light approaching that was coming from um, the area of the North Sea. Uh, so it's coming west to east. And at first it looked like an it looked like an uh, we thought it was just regular aircraft coming in and 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 we looked over at the at the uh, runway waiting for the lights to go on, figuring, you know, well, the aircraft coming in. I mean, sometimes they would have, not often, but, you know, uh, an aircraft would come in. And, and then it, as it got closer and closer, and now it's about maybe 200, it wasn't really that far, um, it, it was just this, it was a big light and it just stopped. And this guy and I were looking, we noticed that the, that the runway lights aren't on, we, and we see this light. And then, and then all of a sudden it just stops in midair, and then all of a sudden it just moves up, down, left, right, and then it breaks into like three pieces and s speeds across the runway. And now we're stunned. We're like, what the, we, you know, what was that? So we immediately got on, I got on the radio, because we, you know, we were thinking, what is that? And we get on the radio, and, um, and this is February of 1980. And... And I mean, we were kind of excited about, you know, police control, this is police for, be advised that. And um, I think the guy who was the, because uh, I've thought about this, who was the, uh, the desk sergeant at the time um, was Sergeant Cohen. He was an E-4 sergeant. And, and he was pretty much saying, um, you know, say again, and so we repeated it. We said, "Was oh, this, this, you know, this light, this aircraft, and you know, went, but we couldn't see the aircraft itself, the speed, the rate of speed that it was moving when it when it when it went across. I mean, it was moving in like a regular aircraft. Then when it stopped, and then when it did its movement, and then when it split into three, and then when it went sped across the, the runway, going, it was going west." Um, you know, it was just going at a phenomenal speed. And the only other thing that really caught our attention was that it didn't make any noise. There was no sound to it at all. And we were like, you know, this, you know, we just, you know, we just didn't know what it was. Just to get an idea, if you go in this direction, if you go in this direction, you're going off base, right here is, right here is the runway. Um, from what they said, Back in December of 80, is, here is where they had the landing site of, of wh where the aircraft had landed. This is the house. This is a Folly house. It's, it's at the end. If, you, if you're um, leaving, if you're departing Bentwaters, uh, Woodbridge, RF Woodbridge, you usually go, you'd go up this road here, and then you'd hang a left, and then you'd go toward Bentwaters' side. Um, anyway, when I had my UFO sighting, and here's the runway right here, it was this close. 
I put an X right here. And as, as for the size, it, you know, from, from the distance we were, um, uh, gosh, I, I guess I'd say it was probably about the size of a car or a small truck or something. It was probably about uh, maybe two football, length, football field lengths away. And it flew across the runway, and the runway itself was, then it, then it was probably about roughly maybe uh, uh, a football field length away, because the runway itself wasn't that far from us. And then when it, it took off, it went straight up, and then it kind of disappeared. I mean, it flew across, and then it kind of went straight up. And, um, and that was the last we saw of it. No, it broke into the three pieces. At, when it first approached, it came up, it approached, and we just we were waiting for it to start heading toward the runway, making its you know doing whatever, thinking it's an aircraft. And of course, we were waiting for the lights of the air, the uh, the runway to turn on, and it's that's where it stopped, about two football fields away, and that's where it did its up, down, left, right, and then it's and it, and the movement was very geometric. I mean, the movement was not it was not a normal movement. It didn't move like. Chaotic. It was very definitive as for the way it moved. I mean, it was just that probably threw us more than everything than anything because it was just so, you know, I didn't know of any aircraft to do that at that. And it was like uh, an etch a sketch board. It's like if you were to take something and move it up and move it. You know, the movements were very definitive. And then and then it just you know up down left right and then it then it kind of must have come to the middle. And that's where it split into the three pieces. And then those three pieces split off, but they uh, went um, across the runway. It was, it was a lot faster than a jet pilot, a, a jet plane. I mean, it, it just kind of, um, it, it just, it moved, it just moved so quickly. It was, it was, um, it, would, it would have been a difficult object to keep, you know, to keep track of, like if you were to look in a camera type thing to, to follow it. And, and I would say the one thing with not hearing any sound coming from it, that was really, really disturbing. About a year ago, um, currently I'm in the Army Reserves stationed out of Fort Belvoir, so I'm still active reserves and I'm a, I'm a captain now. And uh, so there's some credibility behind that. And we were at a promotion ceremony and uh, they introduced some of the guests who were there. And one of them happened to be a retired three-star general, um, uh, General Edmonston. And he was a three-star general. If anybody knew anything about what happened at Bentwaters, I said, and he's retired. Well, maybe he can tell me a few things. And I thought it was kind of interesting that here he was. So I went up to him, and I had all my ribbons on. And he recognized my ribbons. and said, oh, so you used to be in the Air Force. And we were talking. And, and I said, yes, sir. I said, in fact, I was stationed at some really interesting places. And, um, some of them are now closed, and I said one of them was RAF Bentwaters. Oh, Bentwaters, yeah, that was a great base. And I was thinking in the back of my mind, in 1980, he probably could have been a, a one star or a two star. I mean, he had to have been pretty hot. And I said, yeah, in fact, I was there during the time when they had that huge, when they had that UFO sighting. And we went from a very sociable conversation to he just clammed up. And I said, I said, I kind of figured, I still kind of pursued it a little bit. I said, did you know anything? Did you hear anything about it? And he said, um, uh, yeah, um, yeah, if I did, I'd have to shoot you, like, ha, ha, ha. And at that point, he said, I have to get back to my, I have to get back to my guests. And, but he went from being completely sociable to, and I knew he knew something, his body language. I mean, he went from completely relaxed to rigid. Then... This, uh, this other guy came up to me, who was, who was also, I think he knew him, um, but they were all in the same guest party. And he said, um, he said, I overheard your conversation. And he happened to be an electrical engineer for the Air Force. And, and I said, oh, feeling kind of stupid. You know, I think, great. And he said, um, he said, you do know they found something out there. And now I felt, I was like, okay. And he said, well, you know, we've been working with the plastic, with the material that we had gotten from back then. And I, and I was like, oh, really? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, back then it was pretty raw, but now we've been able to use it and to refine it. And, and they've been able to use it, and uh, it can take so many degrees of, of heat and temperature. And, um, and, and he mentioned, I think, something about, like, it was, it was a gray material. It was kind of like this, uh, like a, like a, I think at the time it was like this rod type, like a, just a stick, I guess. Or, um, and 
And I was sort of thinking to myself, you know, it, it just seemed like people were giving me bits and pieces of more information as for, you know, and in a lot of ways validating that what was out, that there was something out there. They had retrieved um, a, a material, um, and he, he specifically said, this electrical engineer, that it was not, it was not indigenous to here. At the time it was an A-10 base, we also had nuclear weapons there. It was about four or five o'clock in the afternoon. And I was standing outside and most of the traffic again had gone off the base. And all of a sudden it's like the sky had broken open. It was, um, it was like this huge wave had gone across the sky. The whole sky just kind of rolled. It was like, it was as though, um, I guess it's sort of like this thing of, uh, I want to say the top of the uh, the mushroom part of the, say uh, like a like a bomb type thing, but I had seen the sky and I was sort of again I, what was that and I, I got on the radio and I reported it and um, it it happened within like a minute uh, and it was you know and it wasn't you know I was used to seeing by this point too I was used to seeing clouds and I was used to seeing you know I you know I know the way clouds move and and this thing looked like a it just looked like a wave moving across the sky and it was definitely had that rolling sensation across the sky and um, was it right overhead or what right over it the took base? over it, it took over the whole sky I know from from my location where I was it wasn't like just a small little thing it the whole sky uh, Sergeant Penniston drew his revolver when they encountered this object and saw clearly it wasn't a, an ob anything they were familiar with. These were all highly trained observers, as we all were at that time, for aircraft or unusual things. Uh, Sergeant Penniston drew his revolver and aimed it at the phenomena. At some point, his, I believe his neck...